guys, welcome to Xbox On. Now, Mass Effect Andromeda is out on the 21st of March, and no, we are so no, excited. It's not. It's, it's not out on the 21st, it's out on the 16th. What? What do you mean? It's out on the 16th. EA Access, 16th. What? How? What? What? What do you mean, what? So EA Access allows you to play five days early for 10 hours on the 16th, so not the 21st. All the posters around saying like, oh yeah, 21st. 16th on Xbox. All right, well, what do you do if you don't have? Well, first of all, right, boom, code, another code, another code, codes all over the place. All right, so get one of those. Also, if you don't manage to grab one of those, stick around to the end of the video because there's gonna be loads of chances to win. And yeah, play on the 16th. All right, well, in the meantime, here are 10 things you have to do in the first 10 hours of Mass Effect Andromeda. Boom, another code. Ow. <laughs> It wouldn't be a true Mass Effect game without the option to turn a chiseled jawed default hero into something more to your liking. Thankfully, the Rider twins can be moulded like clay with a particularly awesome selection of makeup. I mean, look at this guy. He's absolutely fabulous. Now, I'm no expert on space travel, but would the Andromeda Initiative, you know, the people you work for, really allow you to climb into an expensive cryopod with all that stuff smeared all over your face? It doesn't look like part of the designated uniform. And man, is your skin gonna be dry after the 600 years of sleep it takes to reach Andromeda. But it makes for some amazing moments in the cutscenes as high-ranking military officials pretend they haven't noticed that there's a ludicrous clown in their gang. We want to see pictures of your own hero, so make sure to share screenshots with us. One of the major differences between Andromeda and the previous Mass Effects is the huge size of the worlds that you'll be exploring. While you'll be tempted to spend your first 10 hours of the game racing through the story, you'll get a lot more out of it if you take the time to sniff out every single corner of the map. Even in the more linear tutorial area of Habitat 7, you can discover some really cool stuff, like this abandoned alien facility, trying to power up all the mysterious machinery and hearing Ryder and squad buddy Liam attempt to work out what all of it means, does a great job of capturing that sense of venturing into the unknown. Whoa, guess the circuit overloaded. Even the equipment's out to get us. Okay, I'm not sure the Andromeda Initiative trains its elite soldiers to just start pressing random buttons when they enter an alien's dangerous base, but it makes for some great squad banter so we can forgive them. Oh, it's a generator. Yeah, sure, why wouldn't it be? One thing we're not expecting to find in the first 10 hours of Andromeda is a deadly game of Sudoku. When you arrive on the desert planet of Eos, you'll come across alien structures that are operated by consoles. Built by some ancient civilization, these machines require hidden glyphs to decipher, often found printed on the nearby environment. Reaching and scanning these shapes can be a puzzle in itself, but once you've collected them, it gets even weirder. The shapes have to be entered into a grid where no box, row, or column can share the same symbol. Come on, that's straight up Sudoku. I'm beginning to wonder if the ancient alien civilization is actually just my grandma. She loves those things. Though if my grandma had made them, she wouldn't have booby-trapped the puzzle so that one wrong symbol causes an army of robots to turn up and murder you. Unfortunately for us, we are really bad at Sudoku. He's hoping Ryder packed plenty of ammo. If you stick to the central storyline in these opening hours, you'll get to fight plenty of the Ket, the rock-faced soldiers who seem to be the big bad guys of Andromeda. Leave the beaten path, however, and you'll find more interesting things to kill. Visit the small outpost south of where you first arrive in Eos, and you'll find a side mission where you get to go head-to-head -head with a fiend, a giant armored beast that can kill you with a single headbutt. Having spent the first few hours hiding behind cover and sniping away at smaller enemies, you'll suddenly forced to make use of every trick going, using your jetpack to make evasive dodges out of cover, for example, or flying up to higher ground where you can gun down the monster from afar. Even then, you're not safe, as the thing spits great blobs of burning green stuff. Maybe you don't want to spend your precious 10 hour trial getting your head stomped into a bloody pace, but it's a great taste of more intense fights to come later on in the game. If you want to build fancier weapons in your first 10 hours, you're going to need to start harvesting resources. These can be found by picking over rocks, but the big paydays come from mining. Thankfully, this is a much more hands-on affair than filling planets full of probes in Mass Effect 2. Here you have to fire off mining drones from your Nomad buggy. Tapping the D-pad puts your massive space car into scanning mode, searching for all the tasty metals in the earth below. When the levels begin to rise on your on-screen meters, you can fire down a drone to reap the rewards. It's a weirdly 
hypnotic system as you want to place drones in locations that are rich in as many minerals as possible. When you try and find the perfect spot, you end up nudging the nomad left a bit, right a bit, back a tiny bit, no, no, forward again. Yeah, it feels more like your mum trying to pack her people carrier into a tiny supermarket parking space than operating an expensive space gadget. But it's worth it when you hit the jackpot. Catching. Once you've taken command of your own ship, the Tempest, the galaxy is your oyster. Well, technically, four planetary systems are your oyster because you need to progress with the story before the wider map opens up. Now, studying a map screen may not sound like the best use of your first 10 hours, but you've never seen a map screen as beautiful as this one. Rather than clumsily load between each system, you get to watch the journey with some trippy effects that wouldn't be out of place in 2001 A Space Odyssey. Once you're inside the clusters, you can read up on each planet, and if you're really lucky, mine them for those tasty resources. You can also scan for hidden features such as resource rich asteroids, but the real appeal is selecting a new planet and taking a trip across space. It gives you a sense of space as this giant star ocean to explore, just uh, stay away from the massive black hole, it's really not that kind to tourists. Expect to get very familiar with Ryder's Omni tool in the opening hours of the game. Not only does it scan alien objects and act as a handheld Wikipedia, but it basically doubles as Batman's detective vision from the Arkham games. When you discover that someone is sabotaging control panels around the Nexus, the HQ for the Andromeda Initiative, the wrist-mounted box of tricks allows you to discover the tampering, trace the cables under the walls back to even more incriminating evidence, and then hack security cameras to work out exactly who is up to no good. Ryder couldn't be more Batman if he started living in one of the caves he found down in the planet's surface. We wonder if Bioware only added in the gadget to force you to spend ages looking at their gorgeous art design in close detail. Hey, it works! When you aren't playing as Space Batman, you can also play as Space Sherlock. Yes, it seems the role of Pathfinder is pretty poorly defined. On paper, you're meant to be leading the expedition to find humanity a new home, but that role also seems to mean handling any chores that come your way. Explore the Nexus when you first arrive, and you'll meet a Turian whose husband has been accused of murder. Not just any murder, the first murder in Andromeda. The judge ain't gonna look kindly on that. So so it's up to Ryder to do his best Holmes impression and pick apart the mystery, quizzing those involved about a military operation gone wrong and trying to find the scene of the crime on the planet's surface below. I love how a simple side quest in the Nexus turns into a more epic search in a second environment. It's a fun little quest that is well worth following to its conclusion. Just make sure you do the right thing. One huge alteration to the Mass Effect formula is the ability to mix and match skills from any discipline in the game. You are no longer trapped with the skills of your character class, though once you see how many you have to choose from, maybe you'll regret this freedom. Working out where to invest your points is so hard when you're faced with a wall of abilities, especially when each has its own branching unlock path. One thing that does help is the inclusion of a little video demonstration of each skill, so you can see just exactly what you're buying and decide if it's painful enough to deserve your points. Of course, we all secretly know what you're going to do with biotics. Who can possibly resist flinging around angry rock men with telekinetic pushes and pulls? Why not put your 10 hour trial to the test by reloading an old save to respec your rider and try out different powers? It'll take a little longer than 10 hours to collect them all, but we'll give you a better idea of what path to walk down for the rest of the game. And finally, you have to make time to try out the multiplayer. It riffs on Mass Effect 3's Horde mode, putting you and up to three others against waves of enemies in dense, hostile environments. Hopping in early gives you a chance to see more intense firefights than you would early on in the game, with the Ket swarming in from multiple levels, forcing you to use your jetpack to reach the guys firing from the rooftops, and using their snarling wraiths to flush you out of cover. Unlike Mass Effect 3, the multiplayer isn't tied to unlocking a better ending for the game, so you don't have to do it, but it is woven into the flow of the main campaign. You unlock the option to send AI squads on strike missions, earning bonus goodies, but when the game offers an Apex mission, you can choose to play it yourself in the multiplayer mode, so it might be worth getting a head start and leveling up your online character now. The whole multiplayer portion is unlocked in the free trial. Hopefully, you do better than us. Ouch. Boom! All right, there we go, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. But now it's the time that you've been waiting for. Just follow the link in the description for your chance to get your hands on an EA Access code so you can get on Mass Effect early. Just go follow it down, don't miss out, and boom! And make sure to hit that subscribe button if you haven't already so you can see all our awesome Mass Effect Andromeda content coming your way. And we'll see you next time. Bye! Bye! <laughs>